explain merge mining for those that don't understand it in terms of how you're taking these smart contract capabilities and uh, essentially uh, combining it with Bitcoin. Sure. So um, merge mining is basically a way of, of piggybacking on the Bitcoin network's security, right? So you get all of these Bitcoin miners and they're, they're in a constant race to look for the correct hash for the next block, right? While they're doing this, they're generating millions of other candidate hashes, which are the incorrect hash. But if, uh, but so, so what you do is you create the system where it will allow you to be looking for the Bitcoin hash. And at the same time that you're generating those hashes, you could turn, it could turn out that one of the other hashes is sort of like lottery ticket for a block to a, a separate chain. And so you have the ability to create a separate chain, which has different properties. In this case, it has smart contract properties that has an EVM or the, the, the Ethereum virtual machine allowing you to create Ethereum like smart contract, but it is mined by Bitcoin miners and basically shares the same hash power as Bitcoin. And one of the cool things about that is that not only the, does the chain inherit the security properties of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin miners inherit the additional um, revenue that the new chain provides. You basically are adding to the security budget of it. Got it. And so talk through a little bit in terms of um, how Sovereign is specifically leveraging this idea of merge mining and the smart contract capabilities. Right. So Sovereign is built uh, to be merge mined in this way and to have smart contracts, which basically allow you to have a system which provides you with the same functionality that you would expect with a regular exchange, but in such a way that you never have to give up control of your keys. You transact directly from your wallet, and the system is unsettable. So there's no KYC. There's no one who can even try to KYC you. There's... Uh, no uh, a way for people to shut down the system. There's no one who can confiscate your funds. And so what Sovereign has now, after several months of development, is it has the ability for you to trade. So, for example, to trade against stable coins like USD stable coins. It has the ability for you to um, convert uh, Bitcoin into a Bitcoin-backed stable coin. So you can, like, you can hold onto your Bitcoin but get liquidity in dollars. So you don't have to sell Bitcoin for spending dollars. It has the ability to have um, a leverage trading currently up to about uh, up to 5x leverage, although that's going to increase. And it has, which is for me the most exciting thing, the ability to borrow and lend in Bitcoin. So for example, I lend out my Bitcoin in a way which is trustless. I'm not, I don't have to go to a centralized service and, and I'm earning extra money on my Bitcoin. So I, I my Bitcoin to work. Um, and the, the original goal of Sovereign, uh, the original ambition was to, to basically do that, provide a, a service which is like an exchange and provides lending and trading services, which, but in an alternative environment where you don't have to give up your control. Uh, what we weren't anticipating was how much excitement. We, we, were, we thought that maybe no one had built this because nobody cared. Uh, and it would end up being a niche product for people like us. What we didn't anticipate was how many people would care, how, how, how many people would be like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. How many people shared our experience? And so we've seen the community of developers grow very, very quickly. We now have over 40 developers uh, contributing to writing, auditing code, documenting code, a community of several thousand uh, users, uh, we have people, we have artists writing comics about the thing. We have um, people uh, 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 creating documents and videos and just trying to spread the word in everywhere they can. And as the community has grown, so have its ambitions. And um, people are now talking about putting Sovereign into the open source operating system of finance for the future. There's, and, you know, one of the things that I, I think I've heard you say um, is a decentralized version of anything will be larger than the centralized version. Right? Today we have, you know, 
different banks in different countries because they can't be global because the regulations are sort of fixed to different countries. And, and, and on the other hand, we have Facebook and Google, which are global and basically dominate this space. They've become operating systems for search or for, for social, right? So imagine you had a borderless financial system, right, which was able to do everything, mortgages, pensions, uh, 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 creating stable, like fiat in the form of Bitcoin backed stable coins, trading, lending, everything, right? But it was borderless. It was permissionless. Anyone could use it and it could be anywhere. Uh, the more and more of the community are now talking about, well, I mean, this is what we could build. We can build the next layer of Bitcoin, take the, 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 the asset, which recreated the monetary system and, and recreate the financial system in the same way. 